Hey guys, my name is Jade. I'm an 18 year old entrepreneur and I run a few businesses. So the reason why I wanted to make this video is the other day I found an image of me having my lemonade stand at nine years old making my coin. I feel like I was obsessed at a young age to make money, not because I was a greedy bastard and what the heck, when you're nine years old, what the heck do you know? It was because I love creating a product and seeing people's reactions from it. I was obsessed, okay? I literally quit high school two years ago to pursue my online business. As you can see from this like mediocre background. I don't have a ton of money, but I was able to make a full-time living off of my online business. And today I'm going to show you guys how I support myself and make my money. Let's get started. Quick disclaimer, I'm very well aware that this video could come off a little bit braggy. I don't want to sound like that at all. Like I've come from very humble grounds. Like I was not able to afford my violin lessons. I wasn't able to afford doctor appointments. Like I know how hard it is to just make it by. What I do want to show you guys in this video is how it's so possible to take your passion and make a living. So so I hope this video gives you that light um, and shows you that things are possible. So with that being said, let's talk about money maker number one. Other than the lemonade stand, which I don't really count as a business just yet, my first way of making money was selling through Etsy. I use Etsy in a combination with eBay, but what I would do is sell vintage dolls for 20% more than I bought it. Actually, I think I have it right now. Let me see if I can find it. Literally, do not judge. I know so many of you guys are gonna judge me for this and think I'm a freak for collecting antique dolls, but um, this is her. <laughs> so it was like 2010, okay? And these dolls were hot. If you guys remember pull-up dolls, please comment below because you've literally, you will be my best friend. But these pull-up dolls are retail like $100 each, but I would sell them for $200 or $300 more because they are always sold out. So that is how I made my money when I was 10 years old. I was able to make, I believe, like $300 a month by selling a doll. It was pretty good for an elementary school student. And I was really happy with this business because it came from a passion of loving dolls. And if I could share another doll with someone else, I was just super ecstatic to do so. So the pros of selling dolls or products online is that it's super fun. I find that like I was able to educate customers because I love the product so much like I could tell you what's the weight of this leg what's the material of the hair like I loved dolls so much that um I was obsessed with talking about it and that actually made me such a good marketer because organically I was able to create a YouTube channel surrounded by dolls so I could sell and market these products keep in mind this is 2010 YouTube okay so I wasn't so cool with the editing yet but this is an example of some of the videos I made to sell my dolls Hey guys, I'll be selling my pull-up wigs that I have for sale, and I might be selling this. I'm not very sure, but um, I bought it for $26, but it's sold out, and it's in good condition. The second wig I have for sale is $10, no doubt about it. <laughs> the cons of selling products online is it's really not scalable. I'm very well aware that you don't need to scale everything, but I couldn't sustain this business because it required you to buy like all these products, ship it out yourself, and I just didn't have that time because I was a kid. So yeah, that is the cons, but I really genuinely enjoyed my career in this field. Literally guys, go to your closet, find antique toys that you have when you were a kid, pop it into eBay, and you can actually see what are people selling it for and how much lower can you sell it for. And it's really easy to turn a profit just based on products you have at home. All right, two drop shipping so when i was 10 years old i basically was like fuck this shit i want to sell other products than dolls and i turned to alibaba so during this time of youtube it was like the kawaii age where basically all animal products were given personalities so there was this like bear called rilakkuma it was a famous freaking bear and i would buy these keychains of this bear's face and sell it on amazon and i was able to make five thousand dollars a month based on that product the pros of drop shipping in 2011 and 2012 was there's literally no competition now the cons is it's just now really competitive and I would say it's pretty cost intensive at least the way I did it I fulfilled it out of my own home you have to keep in mind that someone has to do those physical labor work I'm not sure how it is right now just because I don't do that anymore but that is just something to keep in mind all right guys so number three of how I used to make money was freelancing you guys if you are a student or you're someone who is a teenager and you want to make money this is my best advice to get started you don't need to be a serial entrepreneur you don't need to create a lemonade stand all I needed to do do is have a single skill and make it worth for someone else and all I did was provide photography services my school started to know me as the Instagram girl so I was like okay guys if you want photos it's gonna cost you 20 bucks a session so I went on these photo shoots I had this very cringy like portfolio account where I would show my clients and I would go on these $20 shoots honestly it was super fun like I just organically grew my little photography business started to do senior portraits oh and by the way pro tip guys suburban moms with a little bit of 
of cash flow are your best clients, okay? If you're doing photography, for senior photos especially, those moms gotcha. I would actually recommend to literally go to Zillow and type in like high income houses above like half a million dollars or a million dollars and literally go to those house areas and like hang up flyers or Facebook ads to hyper target them on those houses because they have more money to spend on your services. Like I was able to charge $150 for senior photos and that was bank at my time. So going to find the best customer that can actually afford your services if you do that. So that's a pro tip. Now, if you're like Jade, I don't have a skill in photography. How do I freelance? I would actually recommend Fiverr.com. This is not sponsored. I just know they have other virtual assistant type of tasks, whether you can do email replying for someone else or company, you can do like some bitch work, essentially. There's tons of offers on Fiverr that you can just pick up by setting up an account. And I haven't personally done it, but I definitely know there's way more skills than taking photos that you can do. So with freelancing, I was able to make $1,000 in the summer and that was bank for me. I was just rolling in dough. So highly recommend freelancing. All right, so now for the controversial lesson of the day. A lot of people say know your worth when it comes to freelancing. Now I have a contradiction to that. I also think it's just as important when getting started to do free work. I remember that I couldn't charge people $20 for a photo shoot, so I just took photos of my friends to build up my portfolio for a whole year instead. And I think there's not a lot of people talking about that, at least in what I've seen. So I just definitely think like, yes, charge your coin, sis, and get your money, but also don't be afraid to do free work. Like sometimes here and there for my businesses, I will sometimes lose, lose money, money by taking projects, but I know it's gonna build up experience and build up my technique to get better. So that's just something to keep in mind. Don't be afraid of free work. All right, so the fourth way to make money is social media. When I was around 16 or 17, that was the time I actually dropped out of high school. And it was because YouTube was starting to pick up. I make money on YouTube in three ways. One is AdSense. So I get placed ads you see on this video. I got paid for affiliate links and I also got paid for sponsorships. Honestly, for a 1 million viewed video, I get paid around four to $5,000 for that just whole campaign. So it was able to sustain me for like a few months. And that's why I felt a little bit more comfortable to drop out of high school at like 16 years old. So I was making a little bit of cash from those videos. I do have to say though, the pros of starting a YouTube channel is it's very profit friendly. Like you only have to invest in a camera and my parents really did help me kind of get my feet off the ground and invest and help me get this camera. But the cons is it's not as sustainable as you think. I definitely have videos with a million views, but I also have videos with like 2000 views and that variance in views can also correlate to income. So I realized that like, obviously, yeah, I made a few thousand dollars through YouTube videos, but I have to diversify and create a sustainable brand. So it will lead me to my other revenue streams in just a second, but that's just something to keep in mind of when starting a YouTube channel, you have to diversify as soon as possible. So with diversification, number five, consulting. So as my channel surpassed like 100,000 subscribers, I started to get approached by brands to consult for their Instagram and YouTube strategy to grow their brand. And I got paid like $75 an hour, which is pretty cool. Like I was able to afford apartment in LA, travel the world. It was pretty good. Like I made a decent living, but I definitely think it's a tricky situation when you trade time for money because you could be someone's bitch easily. So I really tried to at least, you know, charge more throughout the years. So now I do around $500 an hour, give or take. I don't do too many hourly consulting sessions anymore because I prefer to do project-based stuff. I just find that trading money for time can easily become a job. Like I didn't start a business to get employed by someone. I started a business to create my vision. So it's really important if you guys do do consulting, like just to be very mindful of that because yes, it's very profitable, but you can easily be someone else's bitch if you don't know what you're doing and you're just not charging enough for it because I've lost more money sometimes by consulting because it took me a flight to get there, come back, book a hotel. Like I've definitely lost money. So just to be mindful of that profit and cost. <laughs> Guys, if you're so far enjoying this video, make sure to give this video a like to let me know that you're enjoying it and subscribe to the channel for more videos about entrepreneurship. All right, number six. <laughs> Now I currently make money through software and my own products. So basically after consulting, like I said, I just became very, very tired of just trading money for time. And I realized like my dream has always to build a product. Like since the lemonade stand days, I was just obsessed with creating an experience. And I just didn't do it anymore. I just felt like I was selling it. Yeah, sorry, I'm being dramatic. I was just super grateful for those opportunities, of course. Like I'm not saying I'm not grateful for those consulting sessions. What I am saying though, is I knew that it was time to start something new. 
So a year ago with my co-founder, I started a text message software called PBJ app. And this has been an amazing journey. PBJ is a text message platform for brands to use to grow their business. And for every customer we get, it's around $1,500. And the pro of software is that it's very scalable. Like adding one user doesn't cost us too much money. However, the biggest cons of doing software is it's very capital intensive at the start. Like. We probably put in over $100,000 into our platform so far, and we still have another half a million dollars to go to finish our platform. Like, it is not cheap, and I literally pour every like drip of money I have into this project because I really believe in it. But yeah, that's just one of the cons of building your product. But I love it. I really love our platform. And if you guys want to know more information about my text message platform, I'll just put information in the description box, and you guys can check it out. Around the same time I started PBJ, I also started Eat Like, which is a food box. I'm not going to go too much into detail about this project, but I started a food subscription box company. Don't ask why, I just pull myself into very interesting opportunities that don't really make sense all the time. But yeah, each box is $30, so we don't make a ton of profit, honestly, on the boxes. We actually lose more money. <laughs> but um, yeah, that is another revenue stream that I'm currently working on and really trying hard to build and hopefully become profitable. I actually have a whole video about how apps don't make money. I will link it up here in the cards or in the description box if you guys want to know why most companies aren't profitable. All right, guys, so to break it down, you saw six ways of how I make money. And now I'm going to show you guys where I make my money mostly. So 30% of my revenue, I would say, is from PBJ app. It's customers that pay us to use our text message platform. Then the other 30% is consulting. I consult for Shopify brands to grow their business for e-commerce. My father and I have kind of worked on that together. Another 30% I do make from YouTube, whether it's apps, Ads, sponsorships. I definitely think that YouTube has brought me so many opportunities with that. And lastly, I have this like little sliver percentage of just random gigs that I do. Like I do have each like, I have a couple other side hustles. I like have an obsession with running businesses, as you can tell. Like if there's a lemonade stand opportunity, I'm jumping on it. So yeah, I definitely spread myself a little thin sometimes, but my main focus has always been PBJ, consulting, and YouTube. So those are the ways I currently make money. Hey guys, so I just want to say thank you so much for watching today's video. If you guys want to know more about entrepreneurship and how I spend my money, give this video a thumbs up and shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. Comment if you have any questions about business, finance. I'm not an expert. I actually don't have savings. <laughs> if you guys want to know a whole video about why I don't have savings, let me know and I can talk about how I spend my money. I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.